Yes. All right. Um, the last thing I want to go over with you guys is actually what I'm going to expect you expect you actually um, to do first. All right. And what that is going to encompass is um, determining the slope and the y-intercept. Because a lot of times, especially when we get back from break, uh, we're going to actually, it's going to be very important for us to be able to look at what exactly the slope is. And also, the y-intercept's not too bad as well. So if you guys remember the first example that I went over, we rewrote it in slope-intercept form, which I am going to want to see your work of you rewriting it in slope-intercept form. However, um, there is a kind of a rule for when we're, every single time you're solving for slope-intercept form, we can actually identify what the slope and the y-intercept are going to be. Slope and y-intercept. And that rule is, if I was to go ahead and solve for y here, I'm not going to do it. Um, well, actually, I, I will at the end. If I was going to solve for y, our slope can be written as negative a over b, where our y-intercept can be determined as just taking c over b. So without even solving anything, we can determine what our slope is and what our y-intercept will be. Let me write that like this. So if I say, what's the slope, without even having to rewrite the slope-intercept form, you can simply say, oh, it's the opposite of a over b. All right, let me just explain how I got that. ax plus by equals c. If you're going to solve for y here, you would subtract ax. Right? Then you have by equals negative ax plus c. Then to solve for y, you divide by b, divide by b, and you get y equals opposite of a over b x plus c over b. So that is your slope. That is your y-intercept. Make sense? OK. So in your guys' work that we're going to do for about the next